if you've done this right, when you squeegee out the bubbles, you're going to go from the back to the front, and you'll actually get water. You'll see you've got water on my pants. You'll actually get water coming out of here. Along with the air, the water is what makes the, uh, the air escape. So you'll just squeegee along. So my, my outlets in this kitchen are right here. So I'm going to need to find those first. You have this strange, same strange problem that I have. You're just going to cut right in, like I'm doing now. You can kind of feel around with your, um, with your finger, and you can find where the outlets are so you're not actually cutting into them. Cutting right on the outside edge. And don't worry, if you cut a little bit further like I just did, this film is actually pretty forgiving. Um, it sort of self-closes a little bit, so don't spaz out if you cut a little too far. It'll all work out. Okay, so there's my outlet. It's kind of like wrapping a gift. So I'm going to cut in on an angle. Trim it right at the wall. Again, you can always cut more later. So if you need to leave yourself a little bit of room and then come back and trim it again, that's fine. I have an edge that's really close to exactly what I need. I'm going to use this to warm up the, um, the film, and it's just like warming up butter. So there you go. I'm warming it up, sticking it down, and I have a nice, solid edge right on the top. What you're going to do on this corner is simply fold over um, the edge. So I'm going to cut right into the edge of the counter. And I'm going to take this piece and fold it over. You can see I'm kind of working my way around here. And same thing here. I'm going to make a little cut. I'm going to trim it right at the wall. And then, I'm going to fold this right over. And I promise you, you are not going to see it. Okay, so I have two out of three edges done. And we're just going to tackle the front edge just the same way we've done these other two. So, I'm doing here. Actually, I'm going to warm up this little bit, this little edge here, so I get a nice tight edge. So I'm not trimming right up to the edge yet. I'm just giving myself a little bit more room to work with. And then this corner piece, I'm going to fold back. I don't want it on my front edge. I'm going to cut it right up to the corner of my countertop, and I'm going to trim off the excess, and fold it right around. And because it's granite, because there's no definite pattern, it's very, very hard to see that little fold. Now I'm going to show you how to tackle the dreaded corner. Again, there are a couple of ways that you can do this, and whichever way you pick, it's going to look fabulous. And chances are it's going to look a million times better than your old laminate counters. But there are a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, the easy way, and the no-fuss way, is to take two stripes of film, run one of them this way and one of them this way, so they are perpendicular to each other, and again, because there's no definite pattern, the pattern's going to um, overlap, and you're really not going to see the line where they come together. Um, the other way you can do it is what I'm about to show you. All granite kitchens all have a seam somewhere. So um, once you see this seam, and I'll show you a picture here of a couple of seams that we've done, 
But once you see this seam, you might actually notice it, but I want to tell you, if you go into a friend's house with an actual granite kitchen, you're going to see a seam much bigger than this. So uh, if you've never seen that before, start scoping out your friend's um, sinks, if they're usually in the sinks in the corners, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you how to do this so it looks like an actual granite seam, but better. All right, so what you need is the uh, yardstick. I'm going to use yardstick. You need your cutting edge and two pieces that are going to overlap. We're going to take the first piece, spray it with our water, and spray the entire area really, really well. You want it wet. You don't just want it moist. You want to spray it really well. You want a lot of water under there because you are going to have to move things around. Take the backing off. And because it's a corner, I'm going to go right into the corner here. And here's the trick. I'm only going to be using this part of it, not the back part. So I want to make sure that this, everything's nice and wet, so I can reposition. And I want to make sure that I have the edge that I want over here because this is going to get cut out in a minute. Now I'm going to wet the top of this and the backsplash. Then I'm going to take a second piece of granite and I'm going to lay it right over the top. I'm not taking the backing off yet, and I'm not sticking it to anything. I'm just going to lay it in the area where I'm going to be overlapping. Now, it's great if you can get it to stick down just on one little corner, one little piece, um, but it's not necessary to do that just yet. Now, I'm going to take my straight edge, and I'm going to locate, you can't get all the way into the corner with a, um, a yardstick like this because it's not corner shaped, but you can get, you can find where the corner is, and I'm going to look, I'm just going to feel around here, and I'm going to find where my corner is here. And remember, you need to leave overhang for the edge, so I'm just going to note where it is, and I'm just going to poke a little hole right there as my marker. So this is where it really helps to have a second person. Thanks for coming in to help me. Um, but she's going to hold the straight edge completely straight, and I'm going to drag along the straight edge with my cutting edge, and I'm going to go right through both layers of granite, and there's a layer of backing on it as well. So I need to press pretty hard to get right through there. So once we have the cut, I'm actually going to trim it up back from here, meet up with my line that I just drew, and This entire piece now is scrap, and this piece is scrap. But I want to position this right where it's going to sit. So I'm just going to take the backing off of this little corner here and slap it down so it doesn't go too far everything else off and pull the lower layer off. There's 
nice cut that I made. That piece of scrap too. Okay, so now you can see how they match. All I need to do now is take the backing off, spray it down, make sure they're, uh, they're touching, and it's a perfect seam.